Hi everybody, it's me Emily. I am so sorry I have not been uploading for the past couple of weeks. Um, as you guys can tell, my anxiety, um, shortly after I posted, um, I would say like two weeks after um, I posted my last video, it was um, the most rarest and forgotten kid shows. Um, I felt a bit unwell actually. Um, it wasn't Covid, thank God. Um, it was obviously a flu. But um, with the flu and anxiety, it made me so ill. Like it really, it really made me like so much worse because I was very certain I had COVID, but um, I phoned up a medical professionist and I asked her if I could have a COVID test. And then like, she asked me like, what were your symptoms? So I told her that my legs were like in agony. They were like so achy. This was um, the, start of, the start of the symptoms. Um, I felt exhausted. I felt dizzy um yeah and all that and then um towards like the few days I suddenly got the sore throat I had I had a lot of phlegm but the aches and the pains were gone the dizziness was gone the exhaustion was gone and thankfully she said to me you don't have covid so and believe it or not I broke down in tears because I was just so relieved to hear that I was like oh thank god because but this is just horrendous this just shows like how much anxiety can like do to us and how it can make us so ill like I remember I did not eat my food which was a big concern for me because I love eating so which is why I'm so chubby but yeah I love food anyway um enough about that but this video I want to talk to you guys about when what ifs become real a, re a reality so this has happened to me a couple of times I would say quite rarely but these things really do happen. I mean, we always have, what if that happens? What if this happens? What if I have to go here? What if I have to go there? But let me just give you um, a quick example. So it's like, you um, go to a doctor, you're scared that they're going to send you up to hospital. And this um, actually happened to me a few years ago. And I posted a video about it as well. That was um, when I had um, a pass on my thumb. And I was scared that he was going to send me up to A&E. And believe it or not, it happened. And I had to face my worst nightmare with um, needles. I had to have two needles in my thumb, which was not fun at all. But it, <laughs> but um, yeah, it turned out all right in the end. But um, there's another example where like, you want to meet up with friends. You want to like go out for a meal together. But then you have this sort of what if, like they cancel on me like last minute. Um, or like you go and it's rubbish. Like you think, why the hell did I come for? Now that again has happened to me. Um, this happened to me last week, actually. I was meant to go out with friends for a meal, but they canceled on me at last minute, every single one of them, because they all had a problem, which they wouldn't tell me about, which was very frustrating. So I have a very bad feeling. They went off without me because they don't like my um, my time there, my time with them or something, but... No, I know it's not. But um, I do want to talk to you guys about an incident that happened on um, last Sunday. Now, this now last weekend, obviously, on a Saturday, it was the best day of my life. Absolutely brilliant. I went out with my sister. Um, I spoiled myself. I literally went wild. I bought sweets because, um, believe it or not, I gave up chocolate for 40 days and 40 nights. And I'm already struggling. So, but I thought... As long as I can have sweets, then yeah, that's all that matters. So yeah, spoiled myself with sweets. Um, I bought them scratching off um, picture things because they're so good for mental health. Hi I highly recommend them. Um, I think they're called etch -a sketch or something um, where like you have a picture, it's all black, you scrape it off and that you scratch it off and then it becomes a picture. I highly recommend them. They are so good for mental health. Um, what else did I do? Yeah, I got a milkshake. I love my milkshake. It was absolutely delicious. I bought a DVD. I literally went wild. <laughs> but on Sunday, um, I meet up with my friend and my sister. We um, And my friend, I've, she's known me since I was a baby. So obviously, as you can say, since I was in nappies. So we um, we meet up and she, um, believe it or not, she has um, a one-year-old. And I've seen him so many times and he is so adorable. I absolutely love him a bit. I love our little hugs all the time. Um, and we decide, and obviously I came up with the idea, instead of like going to the cafe just for um, a sit down, a chat, which is what we usually do. And it just got so boring. 
we decided, you know what, let's take him to the park. Let's like, cause I just imagine like, wouldn't it be so nice if I could just hold his hand, just like run up to him to the slide and be like, no, me first, just, you know, joking with him. But so like, you know, we decided to do that. I'm very excited. I was literally like wetting myself with excitement because I just, I just couldn't wait to see him. And so we um, take him to the park. He um, gets out of the buggy. And the thing is that as he's like a one-year-old, I mean, surely there could be other age now where they should start like reaching out their hand. They should start like talking normal. He's um, a little bit behind with his speech, but he is talking a little bit. Um, but the problem with him though, is that he did not like listen to me. He didn't listen to my sister. Um, he didn't listen to his mum all the time. He just wanted to like mess around. Like if we wanted to go one direction, then she, then he would go a different way. And I'd be like, come on, like, you know, let's go here. Do you want to hold my hand? He wouldn't even react to it. He wouldn't like listen whatsoever. And I just thought, oh yeah, you know, that's him just being a bit silly. Like, you know, cause like he was laughing, he was happy. And it was just, it was, which was so funny to see. And all of a sudden there was all like these people, they kept walking past us. And my friend kept saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I was trying to be like, responsible I was trying to like be like you know come over here let's hold hands but he was not having any of it so which was annoying and then all of a sudden like um you know how babies they always trip over and they hurt themselves um obviously that happened and the problem is though is that I did have a thought thinking what if he falls over and he hurts himself he starts crying and then everyone gives us the stare and believe it or not, that was the what if that became a reality. So he trips over and I was like, oh no, oh no. And my friend like walked up to him and then like, you know, gave him a hug and he started crying and literally he just wouldn't stop. Now I understand that's exactly what babies and toddlers do. Like once they start crying, they just can't stop. But what horrified me was like, um, because like the way that he was screaming, he was crying and I thought, blimey, like, is he hurt or something? Like, is he okay? That's like the biggest worry for me though. And like, so my friend decides to put him in, in his buggy just to like, you know, warm him up, making sure he's comfortable. And what she said was, is that I've never seen him like that. That really set off my anxiety because I was like, oh my God, what do you mean you've never seen him like this? Like, is he, he's not like that all the time? Like, what do you mean? And because it made me worry thinking that what if he's hurt his knees, they could turn into sepsis if it doesn't get treated, like, or if you don't put any antibiotic cream on his knees or something. So yeah, and then like, he just wouldn't stop and we decided that, you know, this is too much for him, let's just take him to the cafe. So we um, took like the um, a buggy inside the cafe, still crying, he was still screaming. And believe it or not, the cafe was completely packed. It was just filled with so many families, so many kids. It was just unreal. And then like we opened the door and the minute we walked in, everyone gave us the stare, like literally the evils. Like, oh my God, you've got the crying baby. Oh my effing God. You know what I mean? And which, I mean, every parent goes through that. I mean, like you literally feel the embarrassment of it. And it's like, but then, it, and then like what broke, I mean, like the, the thing with me, I don't know if it's because I'm too kind hearted or if it's just because like, I'll tell you guys them just, just a little bit later on, but I think it's just because where I'm so kind hearted. It's like when you see a baby cry, like when you're like responsible, responsible for that baby or like um, a toddler or something and you see them cry. I mean, that really breaks my heart. It really, I don't know why, but it just, it just makes me feel so broken that I just want to break down, I just want to cry, and like walk away from it, but obviously as like, you know, if you are a parent, you can't, you have to like put up with that every 24-7, and that's just so like sad, like for me, it was just so sad to see him like that, it was just so awful, and the annoying thing that happened was, is that she, um, whenever like we tried to sit down somewhere, he wouldn't be comfortable, and then my friend said, right, let's move to another table. We tried that and she goes off, gets her coffee. Me and my sister, we're trying to calm him down, tried singing him songs. I tried to go on my YouTube, um, just type in his favourite show. But the problem was I, I didn't even have Signal, which was very frustrating. So I couldn't play his favourite song. 
I couldn't like put his favourite TV show on, which was very annoying. And yeah, and then like everyone was just like literally like, walking past us. <clears throat> there were like kids everywhere and it was just so hopeless. It felt, I felt like a terrible person. And I know that's what everyone else feels like when, you know, you're like holding responsible for it. And yeah, and then all of a sudden my friend decided, no, we didn't like that table either. So we moved again and then we moved again. And it, it was like playing musical chairs. It was so frustrating. It's like, you know, you find a chair, you don't like it, you move. And then eventually we um, finally found him a place and my friend decides to change him, but by using the comfy seats, not in a baby room. And she wanted me to like, um, obviously like keep an eye, make sure that no one's looking at him. And all of a sudden what he did, what, what like the baby did, he um, threw his bottle on the ground. So um, I quickly like got up, put it, put it back in. And my friend had a go at me because like I wasn't blocking him. And I was like, really? Like, what about putting him in the changing room or something? And she actually said to my sister that, oh, he doesn't like that. And I'm like, well, do you know what? No, babies don't even like being changed. They hate it. They absolutely hate it. But tough. That's like saying tough shit. That is your baby. You have to protect their hygiene. You have to keep them happy and healthy. You can't, you can't just change them in public. That's just, I mean, unless it's an emergency. I mean, yeah, that's fair enough. But honestly, and then believe it or not, I had the biggest meltdown. I literally cried my eyes out because I was so broken to see him cry. I couldn't like be responsible. I couldn't calm him down. It was just so difficult. It felt like he didn't like me anymore. He hated me. I felt like the whole world hated me. And as you guys know, um, my sister gave birth to my, um, had a stillbirth five years ago. And I feel like the grief on it was like catching up on me. And I literally felt like, oh, is that why this happened to us? Is that why he died? Because like, what if that was the reason that he died? Because I wouldn't have coped with it well. So I literally like walked out because I was crying. I was having panic attacks. My sister followed me and she had to like walk me home because I was in a right state. It was just unreal. So yeah, I literally cried for hours because I was literally in a very bad state. And it's just sad because it's like, I want to be a mother one day, but I feel like there's no way that's ever going to happen, is it? Because it's like, it's not just about them crying or everything but it's more like you have to take them up to A&E every night give them their injections and like keep them happy and it's like listen to them cry all the time and it just and it's like I hate seeing babies cry because it breaks my heart and it's like absolutely awful so yeah I can't believe that this story went on for so long but yeah and it's just another thing as well that happened this happened like last year as well I was meant to go to Winter Wonderland with my sister and obviously the fact that I'm still not jabbed, which I still, to this day, don't flaming understand. I mean, this was like before we obviously had Freedom Day. Like, why the hell are you punishing the non-vaccinators and you're like congratulating the fully vaccinated and of course the um, boosters when like, I mean like whoever has the vaccine or not, they can still catch COVID. I mean like I've known people who are fully jabbed, have had their boosters, they've had COVID. So why the hell are you punishing us for it? I mean, that, I would say that's not keeping us safe. That's just punishing us. And what actually happened was we got, um, we received a notice the day before, oh, it's like the night before we was meant to go. And we was meant to go in the early morning saying that like, if you come with a negative COVID test, you can come in. If you're fully jabbed, you don't have to take a COVID test. Now I wanted to take a COVID test, but the problem was we was too late for it because we was going to go the night before, like not the night before, um, in the morning. But we received the notice the night before the morning and all the shops were closed. The chemist was closed. We couldn't receive a COVID test the next morning. So yeah, and I did have a what if thought thinking, what if that happens? And it did happen. So it's just, I've always been let down so badly so many times that it has literally made me lose so much trust with my with myself and like with everyone else around me like like don't you dare 
ask me to meet you. Don't even think about planning things because they're not going to work. And it just, the fact that it happens to me so many times. And it's like the amount of time I'm like, my mom keeps saying to me, it's life. Get on with it. Learn to live with it. And I am like, oh, really? Like, you make plans every single time and then you get let down last minute, like all the time? No way. That's that's rubbish. I mean, come on. So, yeah, I thought I'd do a quick, well, obviously not a quick video because this is quite long. But, um, yeah, this is my video of like when what ifs become a reality. Now, I'm not sure about the advice I would love to give to you that. But I would love to say that, you know, you will go through, um, we all go through like some what ifs. And like they do, like sometimes like they may become a reality and we just don't even know it yet. But then again, it's like um, a reaction to like current events, which is also like to do with fear. So because, you know, you go through like one um, horrible moment and then like you worry about what if it happens again and stuff like that. So I would say that, yeah, but I just wanted to let out this um, horrendous incident that happened and it's like geez man you want kids this is what you're gonna have to put up with but it's like I wish to God that what she should have done like if she never seen him like that she should have just taken him home because it was cold he would be nice and warm he can have a sleep have his bottle he'd be like safe at home but she just like I mean like that's the thing like she just wasn't she just wanted to take him in public and I think geez if I was you I would never do that like, I'll just take him home because it's not fair on the baby. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, um, I just want to quickly say that I'm fine. <laughs> Apart from having that meltdown, the panic attack. But, yeah, I just wanted to let this out and be like, you know, make people aware. Like, you know, there, there may be days when, like, we have the what if thoughts. They may become a reality. And, yeah, but then again, it's just how life goes on this like you know we may go through that but the best thing that we can do is just maybe make it better we can make it better just by doing something different so yeah anyway guys i hope you guys um understood my point and i will see you guys very soon for another video um i will be posting an easter special of the most rarest and forgotten kids shows and this show i'm about well, I'm not going to tell you it, but it is going to be something that was another Saturday morning one. And it is definitely one of my favourites. I'm so happy that I'm going to finally able to do this one because it was on my list. And I have put it off for such a long time, but I think now is a very good time to talk about it. So I will see you guys very soon and take care. Bye.